Not sure which mixed panel reports actually matter? In this video, I'm gonna show you the five must-know reports. This is the five reports that allow you to do pretty much anything you need inside mixed panel. Whether you're tracking conversions, drop-off rates, or just simply trying to understand your product. These five reports will help you get more insights and drive more growth. Let's jump right in. The first report we have to look at is of course insights. This is really the most versatile report. Now I have here a sample data set. This is actually a finance data set here in Mixpanel. So we're gonna have financial related uh, events for a finance product, of course. In insights, of course, we can take any event and start to break it down. For example, you know, when we look at when users uh, make a deposit, just plugging in the event gives us a bunch of data, right? We can see this is unique users over the last 30 days on a daily breakdown, and then we can start to do it a different way, maybe a stack bar. Of course, the magic tends to be when you start to break this event by the properties. You know, let's say if we're gonna take, uh, let's say we take the country where the bus is coming from, right? We can keep adding properties here as much as we need. We can visualize the color and make trying to remind us that we can do that, of course. Uh, we can then break this down perhaps into something else, maybe like a bar. From here, you can actually export the data uh, from a CSV or a PNG. But this is, you know, the number one report. You can do a lot with it. You can slice and dice it. In these breakdowns, you can actually have some kind of formulas, like computer breakdowns, right? There's attribution, there's duration, frequency per user. You know, we don't have to do just uniques. We can do uh, averages. We can take properties. Let's say we take revenue and we want to sum revenue. Lots of different ways to slice it. So this is the number one report that you want to understand and master. This might let you do really 60-70% of the value that you might get in mixed panel if you're able to really understand this report and everything you can add into it. Now, what if you want to track funnel drop-offs? Let's look at the second report next. So funnels is of course fantastic for understanding a series of steps and where users are dropping off. A classic funnel is any kind of checkout funnel. Let's look at uh, perhaps the initial onboarding funnel, you know, from the moment the user actually joins the product and then we want to see where they drop off as they are navigating to make a deposit. So we have here in our sample data an onboarding event, onboard complete actually, very handy. Uh, and then let's say we're gonna have uh, a connect an account. You know, before you make a deposit, you have to connect your bank account. And then let's say we're gonna do a deposit here. And we're gonna switch this so we can actually see the funnel steps. And right away, now we have a window here. The conversion window is seven days. This may be reasonable. We may discover this window is actually a little bit too much, right? There's, there's a way to sort of see the conversion time and, and see how long that takes on average. But right away, we can start to see that from the moment the user onboards to connect an account, there's probably the biggest drop off. Once the user connects an account, it's actually pretty quick. You can see it's a 91% conversion rate here. Uh, so any kind of effort you might want to put will actually be here. Just like before, we can filter this in any kind of way. So any kind of property or user property you have in mix panel is available here. We can do filters at, at this level. We can combine events, for example, or compare events if you want to do two different events. And of course, we can do breakdowns down here as well. Perhaps you go back and get the same country that we did before, and we see the, that same breakdown, but now by country. And of course, you know, the more personalized these breakdowns are for your product, the more valuable they will be. So lots of different ways. Funnels becomes a great way to look at any portion of your product in a series of steps. You can add uh, multiple steps here. I believe the limit here is 10, if I remember correctly. So you can have quite a few, a few steps and actually see the breakdown from step to step see how long it takes users to go from one step to the other. Is that as you expected? Or is there a way you can speed that up or improve that rate overall? Now, what if you want to look at long-term retention, not just what's happening in a maybe 10 minute or even seven day funnel. Let's look at that next. Retention is a great product for understanding if users are actually sticking around and using your product. It can give you several different insights. You know, we can start to look at, for example, like product usage interval, how often users are actually coming to your product. But let's take the more classic basic retention. Let's look at the same onboard complete we saw we had before. This is when the user, of course, onboards, finishes the their account creation process. And then let's imagine that we're gonna come back and look at the posits here. So in the way we get what's a, a cohort analysis, effectively uh, Mixpanel then groups all the individuals, all the users who finish the onboarding, in this case by day, but we can do week, we can do month. And then it tracks that cohort of users. For example, there's 265 users and it sees how many of them actually then made a deposit or at least fired a deposit event on day one, day two, day three, and so forth. So you can start to understand things like D7, D30, 
you know, are users actually coming back and making a deposit within one week, within 30 days, and so on. In this case, you know, this kind of product, the frequency, frequency is probably gonna be something like a month, perhaps. Uh, if we look at, let's say, 12 months worth of data. Now we can actually see, you know, how many users were onboarded, let's say, on the month of March. And then of those 1,000 users, how many of them are actually still making a deposit in month two, month three, month four, month five, month six. You can see this data is actually, it's kind of almost too perfect. You know, your data will vary slightly, but you'll start to see exactly if users are actually coming back and engaging in the core value of your product, which for this finance app is of course a deposit. There may be a couple of other things here you can do, but deposit I think captures core value in the app. So once again, we can do all kinds of breakdowns here, right? The same country breakdown that we had before, we can do it yet again here. And we start to see the same uh, retention chart, but by different countries. We may find that some countries or some segments are more valuable or more likely to be retained. Attribution data becomes really helpful here to understand if different channels are driving more users who are likely to be retained over the long term. That is three, six, nine months into the future. And this is our third report. Now, what if you don't know the actual ways in which you should navigate the product? Perhaps you're not quite sure what the core value of the product is, or you're not quite sure what funnel to build. For that, we have to look at the fourth must-know report, which is flows. Now, flows will tell, tell us the different paths users take to get to a specific conversion, or perhaps from a specific starting point. So let's look at a step here. Once again, let's look at deposit. You know, we're seeing this as this core event. And what this tells us is simply the steps that users took after making a deposit. You can see three steps after, but we could do three steps before and zero steps after in this case. So we're seeing the different uh, events that users are flowing through to get to deposit. We can see, of course, check balance is an uh, important step. Let's actually maybe go five steps, see if you can see something else. So we see you know, the connect account, we see a check balance, we see the sign in. We see the most common flows. Again, this kind of starts to give you some idea if users are actually navigating the product in the way that you expect it. If you combine this with something like a session replay, which uh, tools like Mixpanel, Amplitude, and so forth are trying to add, or if you have like a full story, like a hot jar, you can do that on your own. Uh, then you can start to get a combination of qualitative data with quantitative to understand the flows. Now, the key thing about flows is you really want to hide as much things as possible. For example, you may say, you know what, I don't really care about the sign in. You know, users, of course, have to sign in to make a deposit. So let's hide this event so we can start to see the data in a way that makes sense. Or you might say, you know what, we don't care about the onboard complete because again, they have to onboard before they can make a, a deposit. So let's hide that and so forth, right? You start to hide things. You can do breakdowns here that don't quite work in the same way as you might expect. Uh, you can actually primarily do breakdowns by cohorts uh, and, and, and build your cohort in that way. But there's a way to slice and dice this data a little bit further. The, the main thing to remember here, this is an exploratory report and you have to break it out and add different things to make it more useful to understand the specific flow or end goal or starting point that you want to understand. Now, finally, what if you're doing some debugging or really anything related to the technical quality of data? For that, we have to look at the fifth must-know mix panel report, events. So events may not seem like a report. In fact, it kind of just shows you a history of the events that have been ingested by Mixpanel over the last few minutes. But the helpful thing about the events is when you're doing debugging or you're trying to understand what data you have, or you're just simply trying to get a feel for what data is here, then events are actually really, really helpful. So again, you know, we can sort of refresh it. It kind of pulls in uh, data. You can look at any given event and then of course see what properties you're passing and what properties a mix panel collects on their own. Again, this is all sample data. You can then filter through, right? If, for example, you may only want to look at bill pays uh, and, and see what that looks like. Uh, you may want to filter this further by some kind of property, maybe you know only bill pays from I don't know, Argentina, if we have any data here, let's see. Oh, we do. Uh, and of course, from here, you can then go into the specific user profile and follow through uh, this specific user in more detail. So if, even though events may seem quite simple, I find I use it quite a bit, you know, when we're trying to really ensure the mixed panel data makes sense. We're trying to understand what data is coming through, uh, understand what properties are available, be able to link that quickly to the specific user profile that we care about. So honestly, uh, events becomes a really, really handy report uh, to understand what's going on in the mixed panel world. And then once you know the building blocks, you know, the event names, the event properties, the user properties, you can then go into any of the other four reports I mentioned earlier and then use them to quickly build things. But if you don't know those building blocks, it's gonna be very, very hard to do what I just did here in just a few minutes. Now that you know the five must-know reports, insights, 
funnels, retention, flows, and events, you have to make sure you have those building blocks I just mentioned. The right events, the right event properties, and the right user properties, and all the technical details that kind of make up Mixpanel and make Mixpanel worth it for your company. I highly recommend you watch this video right here. Uh, this video actually is, is almost an hour uh, on everything you need to know about the Mixpanel implementation process. Uh, even if you already implemented Mixpanel, but you're not quite sure if you have the right data, you can go through it, fast forward to the specific sections you might care about, and double check that you have it. If you don't have the right builder blocks, your Mixpanel data will not be helpful. So highly recommend you check out this video. My name is Ruben Ugarte, and I'll see you in the next video.